U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson will this week host 37 African foreign ministers and the African Union here in Washington. I sat down with Ambassador Donald Yamamoto, who is the Acting Assistant Secretary of State for the Bureau of African Affairs, to talk about the objective of the meeting. The focal point will be on three areas. It's going to be on uh, economic development, trade investment. The next part is on governance. Uh, and then third will be on uh, counterterrorism and countering violent extremism. But I think one of the themes besides deepening and expanding U.S.-Africa relations is what is Africa going to look like in year 2100? And it's going to be the largest continent in the world. It's going to be 2.2 billion people. And the other issue too is what about the opportunities? Are we helping prepare Africa to meet not only the growing population, but also the needs, economic needs. And, you know, if we just um, perhaps just focus a little bit on uh, trade. Right. Uh, at the moment, uh, people are saying China seems to have more presence on the continent. Uh, how, how, how is the U.S. leveraging itself on the continent at the moment as we speak? I think if you look at the United States and our approach to not, not just Africa, but in, 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 uh, other regions of the world is a much more multi-dimensional, very complex uh, approach because we focus on the whole approach. In other words, not just only humanitarian assistance, uh, but also developing capacity, uh, infrastructure, uh, and also looking at uh, capacity building. So in other words, looking at how we can have sustainable economic growth. One of the areas that w concerns us of course, is the re-indebtedness of some countries in Africa who, you know, we helped Africa get off uh, in de uh, debt through the HIPAA process. And now we're finding countries who, are, who have gotten off of debt being re-indebted through uh, borrowing money. And what we think is that economic development can happen without going back into debt. And we don't want Africa to go back into debt. Now, are you saying uh, without mentioning here the country, <laughs> but we're talking about the loans uh, that, that African countries are getting from China specifically to build all oh, this other massive infrastructure. Right? Yeah, other countries as well, sure. Yeah. And, and so what we'll try to look at is the most important thing is building the basic fundamental uh, elements that will help trade. That's education, that's uh, building um, uh, high savings rates, uh, infrastructure development, and um, the other thing, too, is expanding trade investment within Africa. So if you look at a lot of African countries today, uh, their trading partners are Europe or other countries. And th they should be important part trading partners. But the most tra important partners should be each other uh, within Africa. So if we break down non-tariff trade barriers and uh, barriers that prevent trade from happening between the countries, then what we're going to see is not only expansion of investments in trade and opportunities, but also economic growth. And that could be the spark, the basis for other trade and development. Now, Ambassador Yamamoto, for most of the citizens of African countries, uh, uh, the concern is that uh, some of their countries uh, end up wasting a lot of uh, money, including monies that have been uh, um, uh, given as um, uh, aid from foreign countries through corruption. How is the U.S., uh, in conversation with some of these leaders in these countries, uh, helping these countries to kind of get a sense uh, that you have to be more accountable and uh, seal all the loopholes that lead mm -hmm. to loss of this money? So, and, and that's really a good news story. So when we started off in Africa uh, over two decades ago, and if you take Africa like a Kodak picture, so if you take a Kodak picture today, you say, well, there's some problems. But over the last two decades, three decades, if you see it, Africa has come a long way. A lot of challenges, a lot of problems, problems still exist, but the development is remarkable. There have been talks that, uh, in fact, there's a reduction in, um, in spending uh, on mm -hmm. the military and especially as far as uh, the focus on Africa is concerned. So um, to what extent can you reassure, particularly those regions that are affected by terrorism, like in West Africa, North Africa, and even the East African region? Yes, as you know, the United States has worked hand in hand with our African partners. We have in the past uh, 10 years 
edu um, trained over 300,000 African troops. And as you know, in Africa, 63% um, of all UN operations are in Africa. 87% of all UN troops are in Africa, of which 70% are African troops. And the United States has been hand-in-hand -hand trying to train, support, and sustain African efforts and forces to, to uh, d upgrade and, uh, and guarantee their own security. What you're saying is that uh, uh, the interest is not so much about uh, pumping up uh, a lot of money into, uh, say, uh, U.S. Uh, engagement, but mm -hmm. to help those countries to take care of their own affairs. That's right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And so even though um, budgets are always decreasing, uh, but they're focused. And so right now, for instance, we look at Somalia, East Africa. We look at the G5 countries, you know, Mauritania, Niger, Chad, Mali, Burkina Faso. We look at the Lake Chad region and Nigeria. Uh, but then we look at other security uh, challenges as well across the continent. Mm -hmm. And those countries we are working hand in hand to not only upgrade their security elements, but also do coordination among these states so that they could resist a lot of the problems coming from the outside, like mm -hmm. Boko Haram, ISO West, um, groups, uh, drug trafficking, uh, and other uh, armed groups from the north. 